I'm holding my phone over the pool. I feel very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> it is 7 in the morning. I just woke up. Mookie's outside going potty. I'm gonna go see if Bobby wants to film a video. I think if I make him some iced coffee and come shake it in his room, his eyes will open and he'll wake up. The things I have to do for these videos. I've been staying up super late lately because I just got back into reading. I have missed it. I read two books in the last three days. <laughs> Mookie. Oh, that's just gonna dig a hole over there. I'm at the elevator. Ah, who's that? Just kidding, it's me. <laughs> Here I am getting ready. Of course, I'm putting on lots and lots of sunscreen and then tinted sunscreen on top of that. So it gives me a pop of color. And here's a picture of my dog in case you wanted to see it. I have them all over my room. Then I felt spunky and thought I'd do a little outfit transition for you guys. Now for the biggest challenge, deciding what I want to do with my hair. I thought I would do something new and put it in a low slick back pony, but decided against it. I'm all ready to go. Look how cute these new hand towels I found at TJ Maxx are. Squeeze the day. Be mine. Adorable. Now we're just waiting on Bobby. Whipped up some iced coffee to try to get him moving a little bit. I'm just gonna make this noise and see the expression and film it. Mm. We have very different tastes in coffee. I like my coffee to taste like coffee. He likes to have coffee in his creamer, basically. So I was trying to make it the way he likes it, super light, but I kind of like it, so I feel like it's not gonna be enough cream. We'll see. All right, let's go. Not enough cream. See, I knew he wasn't gonna like it because I actually like the taste of it. I don't want to ruin it with more cream where it's so good. Maybe I should just keep this one. More creamer. Ugh. If he likes this, he's disgusting. It tastes like pure sugar cane. Let's see. <laughs> Good morning, it's Alan. And Bobby. Yeah, he's awake. Not really. We're doing Nogi. I put a poll on my community uh, little page and 74% of you said you'd rather see Nogi content, which is kind of wild. So don't really know what we're gonna show. Do you have any ideas? No. There's one person that comments that they just want to see me hold someone in a row naked choke and then just try to get out of it. I just break right out of it. <laughs> I'd hold it for a little bit on you, probably. Like, I don't teach any defensive moves because you shouldn't be in bad positions because you shouldn't be losing. Facts. First watch has a new seasonal menu, so I'm excited for that if we go there after. And we found a 24-hour Perkins, supposedly. I love Perkins. Shut up about. No. I'm really only awake right now because she wants to go to Perkins. <laughs> I love Perkins. The three for three muffins, I don't know if that's the whole thing, but... That, that's where it was. So dry. <laughs> Hi guys, it's the Pertones. Welcome back. Today we're going to be showing the rear naked. Bounce, go wow, wow. Choke. <laughs> Alright, let's get to it. One, two, three. Hooks. Alright, so today we're going to be doing a rear naked choke. Uh, so basically when we do this, usually it's a position done uh, from the back where we have the hooks in already and we have one arm over the shoulder and we have one arm underneath the armpit. The arm that's over the shoulder, that's always going to be our choke arm for the most part. And the hand that's under the armpit is usually used to control the wrist to kind of uh, help me feed my choke arm around the neck. When I'm here in this position, right, and I have the seatbelt grip, the one arm over the shoulder and the one arm under the armpit, I can either use a gable grip to hold it, or I can always use the underhand arm to grab on top of my wrist. So like the first kind of most basic setup for the rear naked choke is if I grab my hand like this, usually my opponent gets nervous with this position, they want to peel, right? But if I have this hand on top, that's the only hand that they can peel. So when her hands are busy peeling that hand, it makes it very easy for my choke arm to slip up and go around the neck. Now, if I was to grab the opposite way, which is the wrong way, she, she grabs the hands on top, she's grabbing my choke arm, and since she's grabbed my choke arm, I cannot finish the choke. So like I said, usually I either like to grab like this, or I like I'll grab a gable grip. So just the most basic setup, if I'm here and I grab my wrist, 
she chooses to grab my hands and peel them down. Her hands are now busy pushing that down. It makes it very easy for my choke hand to slide around the neck. So just very quickly to go over the most basic mechanics here. When I go for the choke, I wanna make sure that when I wrap my arm around my opponent's neck, I want the tip of my elbow to point toward my opponent's chin. So I want my bicep on one side of the artery and I want my forearm on the other side of the artery. And I want my, uh, like I said, my elbow, like the bone, always follows the alignment of her chin. Wherever the point of her chin is, that's where the point of my elbow is going to go. With my hand here, I like to either grab my opponent's shoulder or I like to grab all the way behind their neck, depending on what I can grab, right? Because I want to make a foothold, right? I need, to, I need to hold it with my fingers just so it's harder for them to peel their hand. Once I make that lock, my uh, second hand, my free hand, I like to like punch up and I want my uh, palm to skim my knuckles and it's like I'm folding it and I'm just simply going to slide my forearm all the way behind my opponent's head and my hand is either going to grab my bicep or better yet, it's going to grab my shoulder. It's always adjustable and you want to continue adjusting you know, as need be. Once I have this lock, I always keep my head on this side of my opponent's head. I never want my head to be behind her and I never want my head to be on this side. So whatever arm my choke arm is on, I need my head to be on the opposite side to help trap her head movement, right? So like I would be here. I'm putting my temple or my forehead rather right in her temple. This hand is coming around the shoulder and I'm punching. I don't like to grab like this. If I was to just grab my bicep and fold my arm out here, she'd grab my wrist and now my hand is stuck, right? So I wanna always stay behind her shoulder with this free hand. So when I have this grip, look, it's like my hands are together like this making an X and I'm sliding my palm up my knuckles. So I'm here, I fold, my head comes onto this side, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flex my bicep, I'm gonna squeeze, and I'm gonna rotate toward the choke arm. I'm gonna open my right elbow to the right. That's how you get the tap. So notice I'm, sorry, notice how I'm twisting her, okay? So that's just like a very basic uh, rear naked choke, right? If you can just simply, anytime the neck is open and you wanna wrap around the neck, go for it. If you're able to get it, great. But usually, right, the guy's usually hand fighting, they're usually doing a lot of stuff, they're not letting you get around the neck. So a couple tricks that I like to use uh, just to kind of control the arms and, and get the hands out of the way uh, to get the Renekin choke would be this, right? If I'm here, I feel like she's blocked his neck, I can't get anything, I like to either come underneath this hand and I like to grab the wrist, or better yet, I'll put her in like a straight jacket position where my choke arm controls this wrist. So it's like opposite arm, opposite hand. And then my left hand will come underneath and will grab this hand. So see, it's like I'm pulling the arms across like this, kind of like a straight jacket position. So if she's like here, we're fighting and I, I can get these two grips, what I'll do is I'll always fall toward my weak side first. And because I fall to the weak side, I now have this hook where I can start pushing her hip. And I can put my uh, heel right here in my, the crook of my opponent's elbow. I can push it down. I can start hiding my hook behind her back. And you'll see that takes that arm out of the equation. Now she can't really defend as much with that hand. And I have two hands to work with on her one arm. So even if the person's really strong, I can use these hands to push and keep this um, uh, palm in her hip pocket. So now you'll see that my hand is blocking hers and I have this free arm now to start working from the choke. Try to defend the choke. See, it's very hard for her to do so. And notice when I fall to the weak side, my hand is high, I'm able to punch down and I'm able to really use gravity to help get underneath that neck. So what I like to do is I like, I'm holding into a key, I'm gonna punch straight down and come underneath my opponent's jawline. Once I'm here, I make sure the tip of my elbow is pointing toward her chin. I'm either gonna grab the shoulder, I'm gonna grab the neck, I keep my head on this side. And then what I like to do from here is uh, if you want to, you can finish with one arm just by pulling back or I can release punch, come behind the head, and do a normal uh, rear naked <coughs> choke. Another tip that I like to do when I'm here, again, because sometimes you might grab this, and if I leave my head out of position, she's gonna grab my hand and peel it down. The moment that I grab the shoulder, I like to put my chin right on top of my hand. So she really can't grab anything, she really can't hand fight, she really can't pull anything down. And I'm just gonna, like again, I just take this hand, and I come straight behind, punch it for the choke. So again, the sequence is if she was defending right, what would I do? I come underneath, Right, if I can get the straight jacket position, I'll get the straight jacket position. Oh, move to the side a little bit, Colin. I fall to the weak side, I push this arm down so I can put my heel right in my opponent's uh, forearm, and I'll strip that arm using my leg. My leg should always be stronger than their hand, and I'll like to tuck uh, my ankle behind their back so now that arm is kind of trapped. My shin is now in the way, preventing her from uh, protecting her neck. Then this hand's gonna double up, I got the two on one, so now she tries to defend her neck, try to grab her neck and defend. <laughs> You really can't. You see, there's really nothing she can do. So now I have my free arm or my choke arm. I'm gonna dig. I come underneath the neck. My head is gonna stay nice and tight to this side. You can either finish it with one hand or if you feel like you can't, I let go and this hand is gonna swim. See how I, I X my arms Sorry. behind the neck and squeeze and finish. When I go for the squeeze here, again, I wanna pull my elbow to the right. I wanna open my elbow up. So when I'm here, my elbow comes to the right as I squeeze, like I'm kind of like, like a can opener uh, there on the neck. 
And that is the rear naked choke. Hope you liked it. One, two, three. Push. All right, guys, that wraps up today's position. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the mats next week. And don't forget to tap and like that subscribe button. One, two, three. Push.